the only way to fix this is to haul off somewhere with it clear off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if we need to fly a little higher, um, let's do it. Well, how far are we going to go? Uh, there's only a 40 meter hop. Oh, okay. Straight east. All right, well, we could come back. We need some clear water here. Yeah. Some good Herc shots for spooky season. Ooh. <laughs> Happy early spooky season. Indeed. I love it. According to my wife, as soon as uh, summer is over, it's already <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> I, I refuse to acknowledge reality until I'm back in port. <laughs> <laughs> True that. I am in agreement. <laughs> so yeah, when does Halloween start then? Is it, is it October 1st? It's Halloween season? Oh no, Halloween starts as soon as they, she starts seeing decorations everywhere and Pumpkin Spice comes out. <laughs> oh, it's so like July? Yeah, pretty much. No. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but She'll the weather has to be a little she bit. She starts buying Halloween stuff all, all, like as soon as like they start putting stuff out, it's immediately like that. And she starts <laughs> decorating everything. Oh, I'm wow. Like, okay, whatever. Oh, What's yeah. the weather going to do? No, she, uh, Amber was saying whenever the weather starts getting kind of chilly and stuff like that, that's like, when it's Halloween. October is like one of the hottest months. Yeah, so Halloween. yeah, Texas. Texas <laughs> oh, it's yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm still new. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when it's in October in Texas, it's still probably about 80, 90 degrees. Oh, my goodness. 100 degrees sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Oof. It doesn't get cold you. for us until probably about November. No, not even then. It's still hot in November. <laughs> probably about like end of January to like April. It'll actually start getting cold for us. Yeah. That's how it's been for the last couple of years. Wow. Yeah, I remember that from my time in El Paso. It's uh, it can get pretty, pretty oven-like in the in the summer some days. Uh -huh. It actually does get a little chilly in the winter there, though. And when it, when it's actually humid in El Paso, it's just weird. It's nice over there though when it's like yeah. chilly though. As long as the power's on. Yep. Yeah. That's a rue. You know that El Paso is actually not on the Texas grid. It's on the grid with the rest of the country. Oh, smart. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Just like that little corner of Texas. Interesting. Trapod. <laughs> <laughs> Those are cool fish. Ooh, that's a nice find, Virginia. Yeah. Zoom in. Gotcha. Ooh. I look at him walking actually. He's kind of scooting. <laughs> All right, I'm getting yanked. Cool. Thanks Don't for the like zoom. Uh, you shouldn't be getting yanked. You got plenty of leash. I'm bobbing up and down. Oh, you're bobbing. Sounds good. Yeah, this is definitely some sort of animal hotspot here. Definitely something uh, that needs to be protected. 
So um, just I was just looking up because I know of a couple papers that have uh, looked at uh, whale gouges on the seafloor, and that that does not mean that this is what we're seeing, but it right. is it is um, very interesting. Um, and there were this was within the Clarion Clipperton zone, which is um, um, you know in in the middle of the Pacific, but uh, east of yeah, Hawaii. it's a little south of here, right? Yeah, a little yeah. southeast. Um, mm -hmm. And there were a total within within their sample area, which uh, cover which covered 21 kilometers squared. There were over 3,539 depressions that they attributed to, um, um, and and these depressions formed curvilinear tracks along the seafloor. Want to go wide again? Yeah. Um, Space between six and 13 meters apart, and those were at depths between uh, 4,000 and 4,258 meters in the northeastern CCC. So, very interesting. Uh, depressions consisted of irregular furrows on the seafloor, 0.97 meters wide and 2.57 meters long, approximately 0.13 meters deep. Curvilinear gouges in the view screen right now. Ours is a little smaller. Yeah. yeah. Quite a bit. That's the it's second time smaller. you've uh, manifested that but. today. Sorry? Talking about something and then we see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or something uh, close to it. Yeah. No, it's pretty interesting. It's, uh... yeah. That might be another rock pen up in front of us. Oh, in the top center? Yeah. So what's our number? Five, six? Eight. Uh, number eight. Had, oh, okay. Eight? Oh, yeah. I lost count. Yeah, I lost count at no six worries. because... <laughs> yeah, um, I'm glad that you were actually keeping count. Yeah, we had to deal with some operational stuff briefly. Yeah, that was good. That was good. All right, so this is number eight or is this number nine? Uh, this is number eight. Number eight, okay. Yeah, there might have been a few blobs that might have been sea pens, but I'm going to count this as number eight. Yeah. Yeah, if we can't confirm, it doesn't count. Can you zoom in? Awesome. Okay. Virginia, the paper I linked Thank in you. the science chat oh. talks about um, bottom-mounted acoustics monitoring for 14 years, beaked whale feeding on seamounts in the Hawaiian Islands just off the coast Hi. of Kauai. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm not sure. Aloha. Hello. Yeah. We got you. Hi. Hi. Uh, this is Upashana from the lounge. Hey, uh, in. Yeah. Do you guys think you're in a position to collect that? Uh, we are doing a survey looking for 10 specimens. Then, uh, yeah, we were uh, uh, planning to collect. Okay. So the story is that this is... Um, the genus Cophobelumnon, it's quite a common genus. Uh, it's not like a rare sea pen, but the issue is that it's an undersampled sea pen. Uh, okay. Because they are so small, they have been undersampled and you rarely find any good specimen of it. But yeah, so just keep an eye out for them uh, because that would be a really good collection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Roger that. And yeah, the museum samples don't work anymore because of pres the way they have been preserved, etc. So yeah, they're not uncommon, but undersampled. Thank you, gotcha. Thank Thank you. you. Yeah, and even when you collect, uh, you don't really need the whole colony. You can also get a snip and a portion of it. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, sounds great. Mahalo. Thank you. Thank you. All right, suddenly Did we're back into some rocks. Is that another one? That one right there. Oh, yeah. um, uh, okay, so it? that's nine. Eep. Wait, is there another one? Mm. Don't know what that is. Shrimp. So that's nine. Great. Awesome. Thanks for sending this paper. Um, yeah, I thought I thought it was interesting that long-term data they had on. Yeah. Um, they don't have obviously images or understanding of what the markings would look like, but they're definitely observing that behavior, that hunting behavior, um, on other environments similar to this one so yeah that's interesting i put the one that i found in the in the chat as well oh mahalo mahalo mm -hmm. just fun to imagine we might have a, a beaked whale show up cruising mm -hmm. past hercules 
<laughs> going for a hunt. Yeah, apparently, there's another divot on the left too. Apparently, they um, a couple of the species prefer hunting at night. So whatever their um, whatever their uh, preferred oh, those, prey is. That's in lines. Oh uh, yeah. a uh, rock outcrop on the right. That's interesting. I'm starting to get a little bit closer to that upslope on the opposite side of the yeah, caldera. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, or possible I'm thinking caldera. it may broadly correspond with this uh, contour here. Yeah. Imagine this uh, giant sediment bed up here on the top of the seamount, just a feeding ground for massive beaked whales. Could be. It's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure, obviously. It could <laughs> be course. any number of things. But yeah. That is, there have been similar observations elsewhere, which is kind of cool. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to need some help uh, uh, kind of dissecting this footage later and, uh, uh, you know, unpacking some of those stories some more than uh, we're capable of doing right now. Amazing that some of these whales might be going as deep as is referenced in, in the paper that, that you were looking at. Virginia, over yeah. 4,000 meters deep. Over 4,000 meters. Yeah, it's really but wild. Sea pen. So what the, what the, oh, one. another sea pen. Nice All right, spot. that's number 10. Yep. Um, but, you know, one of the things is we know so little Should about we? some of these beaked whales. Yeah. All right, and then the next one we can, uh, yeah, we'll uh, keep an eye out for a collection. Let's see, uh, we have about an hour left on the bottom, which gives us plenty of time to uh, 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 do a collection and continue some exploration in this um, is it or is it a caldera with uh, some amazing uh, uh, signs of life in here. Um, and then uh, we'll be back up, uh, up on deck and we'll start our transit uh, toward our uh, final dive location of this expedition. Hard to believe we're coming up on our last dive. I know. I don't want to think <laughs> Well, this is our, yeah. yeah. Wow. We're almost on our last dive. Yep, our second to last dive today. right now, but yeah. yeah. That was too fast. There's another sea pen, but I think it may be a different species. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's very long stock. Yeah. I think it's also an umbelula, but yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Zoom in. Now, this would be an interesting place to do a photogrammetry survey and get a better spatial sense of all these traces that we're seeing. Absolutely. Yeah. Would be I mean, cool. Obviously, we're not going to be able to uh, uh, get footage for the entire uh, uh, the entire part of this Soul caldera basin, like yeah. structure, this this uh, depression in this basin. Yeah. Um, but um, maybe there's something we can do with the footage we collect. Oh wow. Ooh. It's uh, similar to the the paper that Virginia shared that where they've found evidence of this uh, type of feeding behavior before um, and they have some nice beautiful sort of scans and maps of large patches of terrain.
Okay, and what we're seeing on the left here is uh, the slope break where we're uh, looking at um, where the, uh, the wall of the caldera starts up, uh, caldera-like structure. Um, so that's, that's where you're seeing that uh, contact between sediments and hard rock. It's amazing that in these beaked whale... Uh, what is that? Is that another gouge? I think so. Oops, sorry, I interrupted no, you. No, no. In the beaked whale um, family, there's... Um, we're still discovering new species. They're so elusive to science yeah. because they spend so much time in this open pelagic zone of uh, very low profile spouts and, and, do and dorsal fin. So uh, we don't encounter them very often. I'm seeing a couple things out of the seafloor there too. Yeah. But yeah, this is another gouge, smaller than some of the others we've seen. Mm -hmm. Oh, sponge. A hemicorallium looking thing off in the distance. That's interesting, and one of those sponges. Yeah. The sea pens look a little bit, a touch different, but we can take a look at them. Put your mic a little closer. That's one of those. Oh, that's ah, definitely there one. we go. Yes. Number yeah. 11. Good All spot. Right. Yeah, it'd be great if we could set up to. Okay. If we took a core sample in one of those uh, divots from that we think yeah, we could are. possibly be from a beaked whale, would we, to get to it. would we expect to find anything we're unusual? Yeah, we're stuck. No, we, sh we shouldn't I guess be. I wish we also we, had this like thing. We could, we could uh, yeah. possibly pull another one of those DNA. traces. Yeah. Um, you know, the beaked whale would yeah. be like exposing okay. like subset, like yeah. Um, Slightly sediment that's slightly lower. Um, so if it's recent enough, then you can have a different like bacterial community. Yeah. Um, but if it's not, then you you know the, the water would aerate it and, and such. Um, Makes sense. Um, yeah. No, it's interesting. It's uh, it would be kind of interesting to get an eDNA sample from here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wish. Oh, that would be so cool. Asako's ready for a collection. <laughs> if you're just tuning in, you've uh, you've missed us passing here? passing ten of these. Um, I think. Washna said that we can take a snip of the colony. Yeah. If yes. It would be possible yeah. to take a snip of uh, a polyp. Then um, we'll and then probably slurp it. Yeah. Okay. Can you zoom in? Yep. And there is there is a there is a good chance that we'll get the whole thing. Um, just because I think it could be. Because that happens, you know. So, um, in which case, it can go in a, in a in a box. I think it's still slurpable too, since it's so small. Okay. But I don't know. I, I, I have no I, idea. I have no idea either. Uh, yeah. We'll uh -huh. see. I I I always I have a heart. I can never remember how wide the. Ten the centimeters. Is. Oh, the slurp. Also, I think ten centimeters. It's a good question. Okay, zoom out. Okay, and wide. Oh yeah, maybe you're right. That is pretty big compared to the slurp. If we get the whole thing. Our 11th one of these uh, sea pens, Poshna telling us not rare, but undersampled and uh, looking to get a tissue sample yeah. from this organism. This again, mm -hmm. Are all the slurp drawers open? Yeah. Um, two through seven is open. Two through seven, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this is dense enough that it'll stay if we open it. Oh, 
Okay. Can you zoom in? Might be hard to uh, might get just a piece of it. I might just end up snipping off the whole top. No worries, if that happens, you can also just put it in the forward bio box in Omega. It's gonna, it's gonna shrink up on me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it a pretty big haircut here. Is that okay? Say it's gonna take the whole thing. You can see the. Yeah, the we base. thought that was a risk. It's okay because um, we we have actually seen a large number of these, so yeah, it, it'll okay. be okay if, yeah. if we do take the whole thing. Oh, wow. Oh wow. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we're doing the box. Yeah. Omega. Yeah. Omega. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. the collection. Mahalo, Robert. Mahalo, Kanalo. Ole, Kao, Kanalo. Great. Thank you, pilots. And, uh, thanks for the, uh, the abundance, too. This is awesome that we could. Um, this, this, is a, this is a sample that will be used, um, and we know it will be used by someone on board, and uh, it will be part of their thesis, which is really great. I'm just confirming that was sample 111. Perfect, got it, thank you. Cool, thank you. Okay, where are we going now? Off the side? Uh, well, I think, yeah, we've uh, we've met the caldera wall. Um, so, uh, yeah, maybe we uh, uh, track along that slope break um, to the north uh, and kind of go at, um, what about, was that about 315 or something? Do you want to try going up here? Yes. Or do you want to go this? Which? Uh, the down light off? Yeah, down light's off. Oof. Oh, there's an Arita Gorgia. Mm -hmm. Hello. Beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. It, this must be a very low... I mean, there's so much sand that could, and like, you know, sediment and silt and such that could get stirred up and, and impact these corals, but they seem to be doing okay where they find the substrate. Yeah. And we actually, we don't have the, like, waves that we would expect if this was a really high or even medium um, uh, current system. Yeah, I haven't seen any evidence of any uh, ripple mark formation or anything yet. It, um, you, you see pretty extensive bioturbation, and that's that's yeah. the main structure. That's pretty much all we're seeing. Yeah. It's interesting. There's a lot of different um, theories out there about um, topography and its influence on currents. And the influence 
um, on uh, feeding strategies as well and, and yeah. retention of food. So this is pretty interesting to see. Mm -hmm. It is. Looks like we've got uh, mushroom corals, but something a little different in the middle there, just behind this mushroom coral we're coming up on. Can't tell if those are still mushrooms. Those or are still not. mushrooms. Okay. There's two anthemesses. I have the still cam. Ah, uh, yeah, you got a better view of those. Thanks. Yeah. I'm still taking. I'm still taking pictures, even though there's. Even with the smudge. Good. It adds character. Well, it's actually really useful for IDs. I've been using it to look at like um, a different angle of bamboos. Oh. It's been really useful. Interesting. Sponge. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Sponge. Parade sponge on the right, and a uh, stock sponge coming into center. Oh yeah, a little. Um, oh, I forgot what that one's called. Colophagus, maybe. Oh yeah, is it a, a colophagus? I have no idea. Ooh. Are we moving that way? We're going to move uh, 330 this way. All right, so what we're doing here is uh, we reached that area where um, this the structure seems to be lacking a uh, uh, wall, and uh, we we met up with the uh, contact between the uh, the floor of this low point and uh, this this basin, potentially caldera-ish area, and uh, uh, we're uh, kind of looking along that uh, that slope break. Uh, where it transitions into uh, the wall of the structure, and we're following the north side of that um, back over uh, uh, toward uh, uh, where we entered. And uh, yeah, we've got uh, about 45 minutes left on bottom, so uh, yeah, we'll see what we see and uh, any information we can uh, we can get about the structure, about uh, you know, the um, you know, transition in. Uh, uh, biology that we're seeing along this uh, slope break between the soft and the hard substrate and, uh, and uh, be uh, heading back up. Are you hoping to get a rock? Um, yeah, I mean, these sort of look... Um, I wasn't quite banking on it, but, yeah. you know, I'm always looking. Mm -hmm. These are, these are, uh, uh, these do appear to be uh, pillow basalt fragments. Yeah, I was like, I was like, these are looking kind of rounded. Ish. Yeah. yeah. A lot of this is uh, stuff that's tumbled down, so I think we're, uh, we're we're looking at a lot of rubble at the the base of the walls here, and uh, um, you know this this uh, is just kind of slowly um, uh, weathering down over time. Mm. So there may not be uh, a whole lot of the original uh, surface of the walls of the structure uh, left intact. Especially if this is an older seamount. Oh, oh Sako said that those dock sponges we were seeing. Are those? Sako Calyx? Oh, is that the stock sponge?
I still can't believe how huge that shrimp was. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Monstrous. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> I love that that's part of its Latin name. Oh, that's, that's, that's wonderful. So what's after monstrous? There's one that's mm. even larger. What, what Gargantuan? Yes. <laughs> Unitaman monster. Jovian? Colossal. Oh, colossal. That was colossal. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a good word. I was going to say unit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I would lose a fight with a colossal shrimp. Yeah. I want to see a colossal shrimp. I also want to see a colossal squid. Oh, yes. that's, that's yeah. what I'm. Those actually exist, though, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've lost track of my size class as a squid. I've seen one in, um, in Te Papa in the museum in Wellington, New Zealand. It's not, not oh, alive, yeah. but uh, preserved and on too. display there. Pretty, pretty spectacular. Oh, a beautiful wow. museum, by the way, if you're ever in Aotearoa visiting Wellington. Uh, incredible exam or museum on uh, no exams. You don't have to take any mm -hmm. tests. Um, but an amazing museum to learn all about Maori culture and uh, Aotearoa's natural history, political history. A uh, really cool spot. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, it would be great to get back to New Zealand. Highly recommend. Mm -hmm. So many fun spots. we got to go take Nautilus. Zanzibar, Ecuador, yeah. can hit up the Galapagos. Sounds like we just need to do a whole... Just put in the proposal. Send it to send it to Bob. Nautilus World Tour. <laughs> <laughs> Just call it the eight to twelve World Tour. <laughs> eight to twelve all the time. Oh no! When do we sleep? <laughs> <laughs> we might have to recruit some uh, some shipmates to help out. We'll just steal this whole crew. They're pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. They They're can great. still do their watch. We're just going to call it the 8 to 12 watch. <laughs> <laughs> part two, part three. There's some nice pillows there. They sure oh, are. Some beautiful pillows. Yeah, you got some beautiful cross sectional uh, structures oh, in those. Oh, look at that little yeah. radial. Radial. No. Yes. Yeah. Nailing it, man. Hmm. Should go back to school. Might actually pass this time. Well, when, when you get to the point where you can study the stuff that really kind of captures captures your heart, it, it, it makes school kind of a breeze to get through because you, you're just having fun it's learning true. stuff that you love learning about. For me, that was that, that was apparently geology. Yeah. So. You are a great learner of many things, but I'm glad uh, geology carried you through your yeah. academic path. What's that? A fish? Fish. Fish, fish, fish. 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 It's a fish. <laughs> oh, yeah, it looks like another one of those. Um, Zoom in. Almost, uh, I don't Same know if that's the Cateates, the Bethidid one. Yeah, that's that looks like that. Um, ooh, the pronunciation is a little a little tough, but I'm thinking the Cateax. Let me, let me get back to it. I think this whole dive today has been proof positive that uh, sea mounts are cool. You should study sea them. Sea mounts <laughs> are cool. Whatever sort of discipline you're into, there's something to study on a sea mount. Absolutely. Okay. Get a bit of an overhang right, right in yeah. front of you. Be careful. Coming up on a God, that's pretty steep climb. Wow. Beautiful face. Oh, I want that rock possible on my porch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at that. Radio I don't have a porch. You'd be, be cutting that for a while. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. it's way too big. It's beautiful. And I don't have a porch. <laughs> 
stick it by your front door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that would basically be the front door. Yeah. Nobody's getting in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I just talked over you, Dan. No. Please, never apologize. I love listening to all of you. I do just like it when that sort of radial fracturing is so obvious and it makes such a beautiful pattern. Sammy? Another fish under the rock. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sneaky, no, no. sneaky little this bugger. This is another Kataix. Don't hide yeah, from this, us, this right? is a total habitat here, it seems. Yeah, oh, absolutely. How Same. cool is this? That's wonderful. It's any relief, by the way. You're getting tight. Okay. Oh, there's something underneath is that there a with coral it. Height oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a weird place to be. Yeah. I don't see it all the way under there. It looks cozy. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Maybe that's its home. I use that as a decoration. Yeah, a nice little decorative coral. Does that mean it's telling us to get off its lawn? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. These, um, the Eritogorgia and then the polyps of the Anthemastus are, uh, pseudo Anthemastus are facing sort of the same direction, almost like there is a touch of a current here. Ah, or it's, um, or it's us. Yep, that's it. Well, I All mean, right, this I is... I gotta go over this way. Yeah, no worries. This is definitely something at the summit that is down dropped, and I'm, uh, seeing plenty of evidence that, uh, the walls that are, um, slowly wasting away here are uh, of basaltic origin. I don't have a great sense of the exact geometry uh, of this uh, area, but we are definitely in the uh, caldera to crater definition as far as I can interpret. This is a very, very cautious tentative interpretation though, because uh, this, this is the stuff that you kind of need to walk all over and. Uh, measure and map out to really truly uh, uh, confirm and we we don't have we, we aren't going to be able to do that so mm -hmm. we're just getting a little glimpse into uh, a place that you a lot of uh, AUV, fish are calling yeah. home yeah yeah you need an AUV for that yeah so what I'm hearing is there is topography and bathymetry. And bathymetry. Very much yes. so, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it is varied. There, There is varied bathymetry within this this feature. And I'm absolutely enthralled with what we've been able to see. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that this feature is, is in fact, a feature. Ooh. Of radial. the floor. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. That's oh. when you can give uh, Virginia the Virginia look. Yeah, you I know you back. didn't give me a look. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> you can give it back. So no, no definitive on on caldera, non caldera. Mm, we, we're not I, willing not, to go there. I'm not super confident making a uh, a definitive interpretation on this. Um, I mean, you, you know how cautiously I, I I walk when it when it I, I'm not sure about something. You're a true scientist. We appreciate that. I, I try to be really careful with the work that I do. I mean, I might make jokes and really awful puns, and I might miss a lot of social cues now and again. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, I try to be, I try to be careful. We appreciate that. Sometimes science isn't done very quickly. You know, like we're not going to solve the mystery of those uh, circular things that, with those radial depressions that. Um, look a lot like pillow basalts, except in sand. Um, we're not going to solve those tonight. You know, we we need to go talk to other people uh, who know <laughs> way more about um, you know the, these kinds of habitats than we do. Now this is looking that looks like a single sheet, like that right there. Is that like a single sheet? Yeah, that is a uh, that's a lava flow, maybe a low bait flow. I think. You want to follow it up? 
Yeah, sorry, I was getting distracted. No, you're good. <laughs> I'm like, you wanna follow it? But that's silly. Um, oh, don't tempt me. <laughs> Nothing silly about it. <laughs> we got time. We're just exploring. Yeah. The what ship's up? moving up that way. Okay, so maybe this is still part of the original wall and that flowed in because if this is all wasting, that shouldn't have been there. <laughs> Um, okay. Could be something else. Revising. There's we were another seeing bit, this looks like another bit like of flow, one. too. This is another flow, yeah. Should we follow okay. the flow? Should we go with the flow? <laughs> oh, oh, oh that, was well, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you're getting the look. Uh, I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> the roles have been reversed. <laughs> uh, Y'all are tired. I'm trying to keep it was, the... It <laughs> <was just laughs> bad, and you flip it in just in the perfect moment. It was good. <laughs> Hey. Amber approves. <laughs> what did, no, she no said. I, I, I have the worst. I don't know what it is. I cannot ever hear Amber. Can someone tell me what she said? Oh, I just said that was a very well timed pun. Oh, it was extremely yeah. well timed. I thought I heard you say slipped it in. We saw a slipper lobster too. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> dang. <laughs> okay, this looks like parts of pillow basalts. You see uh, some of the little, some yeah, little hummocks, that, that there, yeah. this whole, this whole thing. Uh, okay, this is kind of along the steepest portion of this, uh, of this part of the wall. So, yeah, it kind of makes sense that we're seeing some uh, in-place lava flows, I think. Cross-section of pillows in the wall over here, because you can see some of that relic yeah, radial jointing. Cool. Transition another, into more of a lava flow. Yeah, another lava flow here. That's interesting. Would you yeah. expect, if it were a caldera, would you expect the lava flows to be flowing down into the caldera from, like, mm -hmm. from the rim down? Complicated question, because um, it can happen. Sometimes you can have like uh, vents and fissures and stuff that open up outside of the caldera. Above, out, above yeah, and outside. Like you can see that in a couple of spots in uh, uh, right. uh, Volcanoes National Park. That's right. Uh, one of the uh, caldera overlooks, you're actually uh, you're actually seeing this big pile of Pele's tears um, and some lava flows that are going uh, over and down uh, toward the, cal uh, 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 the caldera wall. And you're actually standing up overlooking the caldera from there very close to the rim. So yeah, it's entirely possible. Um, yeah, uh, but it's, it's also not uncommon to have lava flows that erupt inside uh, the caldera as well. Right. Um, Fissures open up in, along a caldera wall or something like that. Yeah, and so, yeah, sometimes they open up on the wall too. Yeah, right. um, yeah, we've seen we've seen that in some instances. So this is looking kind of sheety, I think. Kind of sheety. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I got to laugh out of Robert, at least. <laughs> you got away with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, oh, we're getting quite steep here. Yeah. Dang. Like a beautiful cliff. Climb it, Robert. Let's go. This is a little bit harder to disaggregate, so that might explain why it's a little steeper around here. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful wall. It's a very nice wall. Kukui, does this count as a unit of a wall? <laughs> I say three units. Oh, it's getting the triple <laughs> unit. Yeah, unit like wall. Sonar. yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I think we have about half an hour before we will uh, leave bottom, start Correct. ascending, and uh, hopefully for a midnight Hawaii time recovery. We appreciate all of you turning in. This is our 11th, 11th and next to last dive on the Ala Aumuana Kaiuli expedition. I know all of us have just had an incredible time uh, being together and being with you all, especially all throughout these last three weeks. What a diversity, diverse experiences, so many different places, so many different signs of life, so much knowledge.
so many moving moments. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this this seamount also did not disappoint. It's been a great uh, great exploration. I don't think I would have ever guessed that we would have encountered uh, large marine mammal tracks like we yeah. like we might have. That has been so spectacular. It's pretty cool. That's interesting. Yeah, I think that I think we might be seeing a break between two lava flows, and this is like the crest of one that we're just coming over right now. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. I guess my new rule is if I, if I see anything that resembles a caldera, I'm gonna go into it and see what's in there. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you see a caldera, go in. Frankly, that oh was God. that was memorable. That was pretty great. Great dive plan. Thank you to all of our mappers, our expedition leaders all of our lead scientists working so hard to put us in these amazing places. Our ROV team, our video engineers for dropping down so beautifully into the deep sea and bringing it to all of us, including you at home, at school, at work, watching live from all around the world. Mahalo kiho. Thank you. Mahalo ani. See some truncated pillows here. Oh, some rubble that seems to have been stacked long enough that it's glued down by manganese crust. Some, uh, looks like sheet flows, probably. Uh, okay. Lots and lots of mushroom corals, too. Okay, yeah, so the presence of lava flows in place here does definitely tell us that um, this this structure formed while the volcano was obviously still active. So this is a very old structure that we're looking at. The thickness of the sediments also kind of gave that away. Uh, yeah. And it doesn't show any evidence of, like, having been exploded apart. Otherwise, we'd be seeing a lot of, uh, uh, like, uh, chunks of rock. Yeah, yeah, like, truncated, like, cross sections of things here. Yeah, pretty continuous flow. But it's all, you know, then there's always the chance of subsequent activity that covers things, too. So, mm. so many layers. Yeah. So many layers. Yeah, we saw a lot today on this dive. This one gets this one gets an eleven out of ten. Oh, eleven out <laughs> yes, of ten. Uh. This whole expedition, eleven out of ten. That's a coral. Did you say a unit out of ten? <laughs> yes. Nice. <laughs> Do we get all of our dive tracks and dive plans uh, in like whatever collection of data we get yeah. to take home? That's awesome. Yep. Uh, it is, uh, you even get one that you can import into uh, Google Earth. Oh, boy. Yeah. Old KMZ file, huh? Yep. Oh, they just give that to us? Um, I, yeah, like, I would imagine. I don't know if yeah. everybody gets one. Yeah, that's why. But, uh, yeah, you can request that for that's sure. That's cool. I've already, I'm already downloading it. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Look at this wide view. Just look at it. <laughs> this is so cool. I have no idea what's going on, and I love it. <laughs> oh, definitely feels like we're inside of something when you're looking at this wide view of this wall in front of you. You feel this big poly 
Just feel yeah. like uh, it feels a lot like staring up from at the Ko'olau from the Kailua or Waimanalo or Kaneohe side, and just have these steep poly, these steep cliffs in front of you. Which that's the inside of an ancient caldera as well, right? Um. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Part of a part of actually a big collapse. What's what, what left of may that, be yeah. a big collapse feature on the northeast end of uh, Oahu. Thought that the uh, part of the coat allows part of that caldera may have been uh, not structurally stable. Yeah. Would have happened a very, very long time ago. It's like we're in a big umeke, like a big basalt bowl. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so down here I'm seeing a few parallel planes and. Oh, intrusion can't, can't features. Quite, um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Might be cross sections of lava flows too. I, oh, it's hard to tell. Because yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I if don't you look know. at the the Bathy map, we're kind of coming to at this kind of point where it seems like yeah there might be an intersection of uh, a little bit of an angle to the wall here. Yeah, could get flows coming from two different directions. It's very possible. Yeah, um, I'm just not really sure. Like this would be one of those things. Uh, kind of map out with, uh, uh, you know, figure out the orientations of those planes to interpret, um, you know, whatever sort of features you could pick out from uh, uh, the rocks. Difficult to do in this case because they're uh, manganese encrusted. But, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, you could, you could do a lot of structural mapping in a place like this and really learn a lot about its history. Let's we're, we're go. Just, we're just getting these little tantalizing hints as to uh, what, what the geological story is of this um, Punitive caldera. Yeah. Let's do it. I'm all about uh, I wish. doing some good 3D mapping. Yeah. Foot sentry down here. Oh. Be a good time. Excited for our next dive already. I know this one's not over yet, but uh, I don't know. Have you seen the dive plan already, Dr. Val? Uh, yeah, we were working on it um, a couple nights ago. Uh, yeah, I think that one will be a lot of fun. Should be a good time, so don't miss it. I think that's probably going to, what, we'll, we might go in the water late Sunday night? or. Um, I am, I'm not sure the exact ETA yet. It's, okay. it's going to be approximately a 40-hour transit. Yeah. Maybe late Sunday night, maybe uh, early Monday morning, but uh, we'll be back in the water for our final dive of Ala Moana Kaiuli. It's going to be a special one. We hope you'll join us and uh, enjoy the weekend. We'll be oh uh, yeah, it's the weekend. We'll be enjoying our uh, transit back, doing some mapping and uh, catching up on uh, some science in the wet lab and catching up on some communications in the data lab and studio and uh, just sharing stories and, and just enjoying time together in our last few days as the NA-154 deep sea travelers. Don't forget, we have a book, a movie, a podcast, <laughs> an album, and uh, some other shenanigans coming your way. Uh, if you want to pre-order any of those, just send in a donation to Ocean Exploration Trust. <laughs> oh my and, um, Don't do that. They're going to be uh, they're they're going to be worth it. I can promise you that. Just That's keep funny. bringing you the deep sea, live and hot, eight to twelve, all the time. Although I am serious, the PC crime scenes, I have ideas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it'll be good. Oh, I yeah. think this should really be an article. <laughs> I don't know, this whole, this whole caldera, putative caldera, excuse me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I get a little excited. Uh, 
That was like one giant deep sea crime scene with all oh, the crimes. It was, wasn't it? All the yeah. crimes yeah. were happening. I mean, actually, mystery circles. Everywhere. What I was kind of thinking is, yeah, right, you could do that and then make it like 3D for your students. Ooh. Yeah. And then you can walk them through and be like, hey, here's what we see. They could get attacked by a colossal shrimp. They yeah. could get nearly yeah. eaten by a But by also, a you could like have whale. the. Um, I mean, it walked on the seafloor. Yeah. That leaves traces, so you can like have that, and then the student who walks with it would then see that shrimp. CSI, you gotta that's just what I'm so I'm Sherlock thinking. Holmes in the deep yeah, sea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we got some mystery circular features, mm -hmm. some mystery maybe whale, maybe not features. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, like it could be anything. Uh, that's it could just, be anything. You know. I like the way we all think. Yeah. Yeah. All Again, this is the uh, cautious interpretation thing. Yeah. Yes. All in a mysterious, maybe, maybe not caldera. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> On the gradient of uh, caldera to not caldera, we have seen um, depressions on the gradient of <laughs> not whale to whale. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. A lot of plausible deniability we're working yeah. with right now. <laughs> Sometimes you got to stand up for what you believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometimes time. you need evidence. You need, you need, you need, <laughs> yeah. you need a little more true. evidence. You need to go talk to your Internet, colleagues. please get some evidence. You need, you, need, you need to go think things over for a bit. Go back to your data and your footage. Yeah. You might get, have an answer then, but you might not. And be yeah. kind. Uh, it's, I love reading all of our comments, even the ones that say that you are definitely 100% correct and we are definitely not. Even those are entertaining. Uh, but be kind. Don't be so sure. Make sure we have evidence. All those are good rules. Yeah, there, there's a, there are places and times for that kind of confidence, and then there are times where there's not. Yeah, karaoke, karaoke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Karaoke. That's the time for confidence. Yeah. you got to show yes. up with confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, Absolutely. we have a word. It's called ha-ha-ha, ha, ha. humility, being <laughs> humble. No. Oh, yeah, you all know. <laughs> but karaoke, yep. <laughs> go, get em. go get them. That's when we say, hila hila makale. Leave <laughs> shame at home. Yeah. Leave shame at home. No shame. Not an yeah. 8 to 12. Let's go. Oh, that sounds that. like something I need to learn a little bit better. Yeah. Hey, so, all learning the important all lessons yeah. out here in Papua Hana Mokuakia. Absolutely. Great teacher. Great kumo. So part of that hula no ea comes from ai kumula by hoka hila hila makale. So it's like when you're doing hula, when you're doing that art, whenever you're doing something passionate, something that you know is true, something you've been working on, you can leave all the um, insecurities at home, all the doubt at home. And so that's what I feel. I feel like it, it was a beautiful little no ea and something that I'm still trying to work on. Ew. Yeah. yeah is, ew. Sometimes it's a lifelong process, but you know, you end up better for it. Yeah. Kukui, we can all say with confidence that you should walk through this world in full confidence. Aww. One manawahine, we're lucky yeah. to have you as one part of this of team. One unit of confidence. One <laughs> unit. I don't know, maybe need, it should have two or three, given your talent, given yes. your ability. Aww. Two or three units of that confidence. A uh, lot of plenty mana. Oh, I don't know, I'm the lucky one to be here with all of you folks. Blessed to be here with all you folks. Mahalo Kukui. Front row, thank you for taking us through this dream tonight and on all the other dives. This is, uh, even now, I feel like I'm halfway asleep. Mm, Robert, you sleeping today. down there? Are you awake? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh. Suffering with the allergy thing. Oh, oh no. No, no, again. You want Zyrtec? Yeah, Still. I have everything, but it's not working. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, I appreciate you staying with us. <laughs> I don't think I have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. it's they weren't going to let me fly the thing. They weren't going to let me fly. They call in sick. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's under this of the ocean, right? <laughs> Well, well, then I'm glad you had no choice. <laughs> Regardless, it's 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 been a pleasure sharing a watch with you. Hundred <laughs> percent. 
You guys all sound like we're ready to pull into port here. Almost. <laughs> we all oh, we got five days. Nice. Stark Ooh. Pridewood. Oh, oh beautiful. Wood. Still got a ways to go. I know. We have several <laughs> more days here. Long way from home. Yep. Most of this uh, incredible crew will have to get on a plane once we're back in port. I know uh, some of us get to call Oahu home. We're excited to uh, end our journey at port, but uh, a lot of people will be making long trips. I get three weeks at home, and then I'm back out here again. Back again. Oh, that's not bad. I tried, I tried to sneak on that cruise. I don't know. If Megan's listening, I'm still open. <laughs> <laughs> not actually available, but... <laughs> it's going to be a fun one. Sure sounds like it. Yeah, you, you know, the, a lot of the stuff that I've been doing in extended reality and virtual reality has come from uh, uh, from inspiration from Jonathan Feely and from Ocean Exploration Trust. Jonathan's on the production team uh, with OET and the Nautilus, and he'll be on that cruise. He's had a, a large part of getting us uh, the new wide-angle cameras and and uh, looking at... at building these deep sea environments uh, in 3D. So I appreciate OET's continued inspiration even when I'm back on land and and partnership and collaboration on that. I hope that I hope that's a big success that uh, imaging yeah. crews. Yeah. Lucky to have Robert flying. Going to get some great uh, 3D images, I'm sure. What time are we uh, bailing out here? Uh, about 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, assuming about a 45 uh, minute ascent. All right, so everything's truncated here. We're seeing a lot of radial. Uh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, a lot of cross sections of these pillows. Looks like pretty thick manganese crust here too. Everything looks a little uh, puffy, and not just from the botryoidal right. texture, but uh, everything's kind of rounded over. No, I'm doing the math. I did see Ken out there a few yeah. minutes ago. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. So it's probably, it's a little over an hour, I think, because we got to slow down on the transitions. But oh, a little over an hour? Like oh. 105. Hour okay. Five. Yeah, we, we, were, we were estimating about 45 back here. So yeah, if we need to that's, come that's, off bottom to make the... We need to come off bottom to make uh, the midnight recovery. Because we uh, got to go slow when we do that at the ends of the drums. Yeah, okay. Well, that means that we should probably come off bottom right about now then. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know how much we on the internet loves our blue water, so uh, not a problem. Give them a little extra. Um, do you want to come up behind me? Yeah, we're in a perfect place to get a final ascent, a final look at some geology. Try to figure out what's go to going on here. Not too bad. We just come up. What, a, ways here what a cool the, like right. floor sediment yeah, situation. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've already been yeah, checking out what the up. top of this looked like That's on Google Earth going. and then going around looking for other ones that look like <laughs> <laughs> for a potential future and cruise. Then, uh, you should totally do that. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh. I'll just dry it out. We're going up and out. So you're getting the grand tour here, like Ooh, right at the end. Yeah, really. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Did you see Adelina for a second? Do what? Did you see Adelina when it heaved? It started doing that. Oh. <laughs> uh, and like that, I was like, Ugh. all right, that, that sort of looks topish there too. Is that topish? So. Almost there. Well, that's that's about all I got out that way. Okay, I'll turn around. Where are you at? Oh, let me go the other way. Oh wait, which way are you going? 
Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, I think you can just go clockwise. You just need to make it a little bit, right? Okay. Holy cow, what a dive. I'm blown away. Yeah, it's perfect. Know. Perfect. Yeah. All right. I don't know if this is an issue. What's knocking around ready? over by the Niskins? I'm ready. All right, let's go. Oh. Yeah, uh, something What's looks that? a little loose there. What's that? The Niskins? Uh, is there something knocking no, around? No, that's the cover for the Optode. It's okay. So it okay. gets pulled off when we dive, okay. you know, and then it gets put back on them and we're back on deck. Cool. Okay. So oh, it just, well. it flops around there on a leash. <laughs> yeah. I, hadn't, okay. I hadn't noticed it before, so <laughs> thanks. Yeah, it's a red cover that has a sponge in it to keep the Optode wet and protected from the sun. Good call, given how hot and sunny it's been the last uh, few days here. It's been particularly hot. Oopsie. With, uh, just this remarkably good weather in the monument. But also hot. Definitely hot. Yeah. Like it's actually kind of nice to chill out in the wet lab because it's like the perfect temperature in there right now. Oh yeah. Not too hot, not too cold. But also there are rocks that have to be cataloged and uh, yeah, I've been trying to keep on top of those. So. These rocks don't describe themselves. Yeah, it's important to keep, uh, to keep uh, up to date with your yeah, data samples and 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 all that when you're on a rest a vessel. Um, yeah, you have it to just seems to accumulate, and then all of a sudden you're you're a day out, and you're like, I have how many samples that I have to <laughs> yeah. annotate? What? Well, with with the rocks, it's it's pretty typical to have a little bit of like a couple of days lag on those, um, mm -hmm. just because you need to find the time to. Uh, hey, Amber, uh, can we get the drum up on the big screen? Yeah, sure thing. I did it the other day too. I think it's just a shadow, what you're seeing right there next to it. Yeah, there's always a little bit of lag with the rocks because you gotta find the time to cut them and then you need to give them a little bit of time to hopefully dry. Mm -hmm. um, not all of them do. Uh, and uh, it, it just takes a little time to, to get the the thorough petrographic to, uh, descriptions that I like to do uh, uh, just written up and entered mm -hmm. verified all that and then right. write up a final summary of each dive so yeah. no that makes sense yeah Absolutely. yeah with with the bio stuff it's way more time sensitive because uh, right. these are organic tissues that you're trying to preserve um, in mm -hmm. their uh, the the, uh, the best state possible Right. Yeah, we do a lot of our now of the processing. We um, the, the the entire data team on board, or the entire data logger team, and then the the scientists who deal with biological samples and and who have requested samples that are on board will um, process the samples. Pretty much. I mean, not as fast as possible because if you're trying to do something really really fast, then you make mistakes. Yep. Um. But um. You know, with with haste. Um, to make sure that um, all the genetic material and, the, and that the specimen is um, is processed in a in a in a manner that um, uh, efficiently utilizes, uh, make sure that none of the material degrades. Yeah, um, which is pretty important. So yeah, yeah. So like after recovery when uh, bio and geo are both uh, working in the lab at the same time. Uh, yeah, I. I I get out of the way because um, uh, uh, the geology station is set up right by uh, uh, the fridges that we used to store uh, bio samples. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm standing in front of them and somebody needs to get in, yeah, I'm going to move because my rocks can wait, you know. Mm -hmm. So there, there's there's a there's an order of operations uh, in the lab, just like there is up here. And, uh, you know, makes life a lot easier. 
Yeah, so after we do the protocol, you know, so what um, what people, m I don't know if they uh, live stream our deck process, but um, after the ROV comes on board, we'll do the, the protocol where we, you know, um, give thanks and, and, you know, acknowledge um, and give acknowledgments and then uh, um, we will collect the samples off of the ROV. Um, usually biological samples first and then they go into refrigerators to try to keep them cold and then from there we'll take some of those descriptions um, length, color, sort of, you know, um, number of polyps, that sort of information and then um, we will we will place those into um, appropriate sleeve sized bins and, uh, you know, with the appropriate, um, you know, Appropriately usually, sized usually bins. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and um, yeah, and then it and then it goes back to the fridge usually. Yep. So, yeah, it's a it's a pretty quick it's a pretty quick process. Um, you know, they have a very efficient system here. I kind of like it. They do. So. I've watched a little bit of it, and it's it's impressive to watch. Mm -hmm. I'm just over there like photographing and measuring rocks, and then dealing with them later. Uh, once I can once I find some saw time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I was, I'm the low I was, tech part of the I was operation. thinking that the other day, how nice it must be to just like be like, oh, my rocks, let me pick them up out of the ROV and put them on a table <laughs> with a label so they can dry. And then like at my convenience, I can go deal with them. I was like, that seems nice when it was like four o'clock in the morning and I got up. Oh for my a gosh, and yeah. I was like, mm. No, I do not envy that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. Snacks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh, the snack fairies have visited. Oh, what and the dreams. world wonders why I love these humans so much. Uh, I was just handed an orange. <laughs> you just, were, oh my gosh, they <laughs> they just show up with snacks. <laughs> out oh, of the blue. what kindness! I know. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is the greatest watch team of all time. <laughs> oh, without a doubt. Yeah, a couple of them stepped out, and I figured, okay, they're just getting a break. And yeah, um, yeah. Oh, y'all are wonderful. We have a wonderful data logger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what she just told me? Wonderful? I don't think so. She 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 just back sassy. I was like, oh, where's my orange? And she's like, did you ask? <laughs> <laughs> And we appreciate all of you for tuning in, um, joining us throughout the dive. And if you're just now tuning in, well, you've missed it. So yes. go to bed. <laughs> no, just kidding. We're here in blue water. We have uh, about another 45 minutes or so. Uh, Robert could give you the precise time, but why make him do that math? His sinuses are acting up. <laughs> so uh, let's just uh, let's just cruise. It's holo ho time. We're just gonna make our way to the surface and um, you know maybe sing some songs. I probably can't help it. And uh, just talk about what's gonna happen next. Processing yeah. our data. That was a great conversation. And, and uh, eat our snacks that uh, the amazing Catalina and Kukui brought for us. So Yeah, much appreciated. Yeah. yeah. I really want a cinnamon roll, but not like the kind mm. they put out there at breakfast. Like, you know what I mean? The like real <laughs> kind. That big one that's soft and has the frosting on it. All homemade. Oh, homemade cinnamon roll. Big one. Dan, if you ever go to San Antonio, they make <laughs> oh, no. yeah, they make one of the largest cinnamon oh, rolls yeah. in all of Texas. <laughs> where it's like a literally this thing's huge look it up look up uh san antonio zach's, zach's trying to kill me over here oh dude, you, you, it will that see. is ugly i see that too that but it's only it's only ugly. this wrap and That's a half right so yeah. wait how would you define the size it's like three units three units of cinnamon <laughs> roll three units of cinnamon roll 
<laughs> thing's huge. With like, equal like, icing or? Oh, wow. oh, they, oh wow. they, they cover the whole thing in icing. Okay, that's so. the important part, you know? <laughs> it's not a cinnamon roll without icing. No, I, true. I would, it's I would, cream uh, cheese icing. It's, oh. not just cream. it's not just icing. Okay, they know what they're doing. Now, I'll give a little shout out. A lot of uh, a lot of people, maybe even people on this watch might not know, but uh, I've been diabetic, type 1 diabetic since I was a, a young kid. And, and I want to give any shout outs. I, I give a shout out to anybody out there who's listening with type 1 diabetes. I've managed to visit seven continents and surf in all, almost all of the world's oceans and, and come into the deep sea in Papua Hanamokuakea. All of these things because uh, of so many friends. Uh, so many people who believe that I could still uh, uh, have a wonderful and, and enriching and, and life full of learning and, and love, aloha. So I uh, just want to encourage anyone out there. I've got a, we've got another great friend on board who's also type 1 diabetic. And uh, yeah, so I couldn't actually eat that cinnamon roll, even though I'd really, really, really want to. Um, I could share it with everybody. A little, Don't a worry, little I can't eat that cinnamon roll either, <laughs> for a very different reason. But yeah, uh, yeah. Same. we've all got our reasons. We've all yeah. got our reasons. But yeah, for any kids who are who are you know a little frustrated out there, I know there's some some type one diabetics out there, but no, the ocean's for you, the the world's for you. So go out and explore, have a good time. Yeah, take care of yourself. Yes. I found a recipe today for pumpkin cinnamon rolls. Ooh. <laughs> oh, oh, that sounds really good. I know, I was so that excited really about it. <laughs> uh, I can make a pretty decent pumpkin cheesecake. What? Gluten free oh. graham cracker crust. I love pumpkins. Ooh. You wouldn't even know it's gluten free. Wow, that sounds delicious. Are y'all ready for y'all's mind to be blown? Oh, yes. Morning. Oh, no. <laughs> Texas? Come on. Yeah. We're, we're going to start calling you Tex. This, this, is, this is my thing, actually. Yeah. This, is, this is my thing, actually. So, y'all talk about um, pumpkin spice and pumpkin. So, um, I just had an idea to make something for my wife when I go home. But So, I, I cook a lot, and I like kind of like experimenting and stuff like that. So, one time I made her cannoli French toast. Ooh. And so, yeah, I figured out how to make the... the the cannoli filling and all that stuff, and I made the French toast like a little bit more crispier, and I, I kind of like pan seared it, I guess, or fried it a little bit to where it kind of like it'll be like kind of crunchy, and you kind of crust it over, and you just push in the <laughs> cannoli fill, and, and then just put a little bit of powdered sugar and uh, syrup on it, and she oh she loved it. But then y'all just gave me an idea, Ooh. I can make the cream cheese pumpkin spice. Ooh. Ooh. So cannoli, yeah. French do toast, <laughs> do uh, it. Pumpkin spice. <laughs> they go. make pumpkin cream cheese. You make yeah, it? Yeah, they do. Yeah. You could also make it yourself. Yeah, I'd rather make it myself. Yeah. That way, yeah. I, can, that way I can figure out if later if I want to do this, do it again or something like that. Valid. What is that in Atlanta, camera? Is that a jelly? Uh, jelly. Yeah. Yeah. Jelly? Looks like a jelly. I'm gonna abandon that. What is sticks when we get steaming? You gonna get steaming? No. Oh. I mean, to get straightened out. Oh. <laughs> I was <laughs> trying to ladder over, but it, that takes power away from coming up. And then oh. we're, we're late, then we get in trouble. You yeah, got something good, chilly. Another, uh, another quick shout out. Um, our our crew, our Ohanava'o, are in San Francisco uh, this weekend and next week. Hokuleo uh, is part of uh, the Moana Nui Akea um, voyage around the Pacific Ocean, voyage for Earth, voyage for oceans. And yeah, if you're uh, listening in from the Bay Area, I encourage you to uh, look up those opportunities to connect with that crew and, and the canoe. You know, some of our teachers will be there, many of our friends. And um, yeah, that would be uh, another great way to connect with the ocean and and, and learn about uh, some great Hawaiian ocean exploration going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be really fun. As always, tune into our highlights being released on all the social media channels on YouTube. Um, check out the. Uh, Recently released videos, a little bit longer form videos on our really remarkable and, and humbling dives 
on the three aircraft carriers, or three of the aircraft carriers sunk at the Battle of Midway 81 years ago. Um, and also featuring the amazing partnership that Ocean Exploration Trust and Nautilus um, have been able to develop uh, with Papahanao Mokuakea and their cultural working group um, through the incredible offices there in NOAA. And, and yeah, it's, uh, it's a really, really powerful video. And it's even starring our own, our own light, our own library of knowledge, Kukui. So um, check it out. Malia Evans also in that video, who you hear during, I believe, the 4 to 8 watch. So yeah, definitely, definitely worth checking out that story. Um, and all the resources and education, you can still sign up for Ship to Shores. Might be a little uh, too late to, to catch one of us, um, but there are more expeditions going out. You've heard Robert talk about cool expedition um, happening after this next one in just about three weeks or four weeks from now. Uh, there will be an expedition before that here in the Hawaiian Islands, so still plenty of opportunities to connect. You can find all that information on nautiluslive.org. And, uh, yeah, look forward, to, look forward to learning with you guys together as I get to be ashore and follow along with all the cool things Nautilus is up to. Who else is coming back this season? Catalina, and I think you're, you'll be back on board later this expedition season as well, and all right. Yeah, yeah, stoked. Amber, how about you? Uh, that's my last one for this year. Last one for this year. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys have done an amazing, amazing work. Nautilus, lucky to have you. Kukui, is this your last one? Yeah, it's my last one. Oh, man. Yeah. They're going to need you. How else are they going to get Hercules in the water now? <laughs> <laughs> I have photographic proof, by the oh, way. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of amazing people. And a lot of amazing people who also yeeted Herc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think your title uh, on the, in the uh, crew manifest needs to be updated to uh, Herc Yeeter. <laughs> oh my! <God. laughs> oh, my. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I think I can probably say almost all of us would uh, would love love the opportunity to be back, and uh, we have a great time out here. It's such a privilege. And oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Even with the seasickness. Even with a little bit of seasickness, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Even a lot, sometimes. <laughs> 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 it passes. Definitely worth being seasick to be able to be here with all of you guys yeah. in this, this really special place. You too. This is an awesome crew. I love you guys. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, good thing we still got six days left to party, right, Robert? Yeah. Time to rage. <laughs> <laughs> the puzzles. <laughs> yes, with rage, so rage, many rage puzzles. puzzles. Raging with puzzles. <laughs> I do need to finish my dive reports, so I'm going to have to stay oh, out of the lounge for a couple of days. <laughs> same. What about oh, yeah, the no, Uno games? Did you give up yeah. puzzles? <laughs> yeah, the Uno games. Those still sometimes happen late night. <laughs> Sebastian, uh, we're gonna, if, I know you're probably in the lounge right now. We're probably going to need a whole orientation day. Where you teach us all Uno and we have one big Uno party. It'd be funny if he came on and be like, I'm going to take every single one of y'all down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Kukui, it's Upashana. Sebastian's sitting beside me and he's like, Orientation day about what? About Uno. <laughs> <laughs> oh. we were, and in the lounge, we were just talking about that. <laughs> so cool that everybody's on the same page. We're, we're sharing perfect. a brain. Perfect. <laughs> we're on the same wavelength. His PowerPoint will be on Uno's uh, <laughs> rules, Sebastian's yes. Uno. All right, and maybe awesome. I'll finally get that one rule, because I really don't. <laughs> Wait, which one? I, I, I can't. Um, the jump in, I think it is. Oh. I can't get on. I I can't follow the rest of the rules to be honest. I'm like, which which one do I do again? Which one can I not do again? And I always like I jump in on the wrong card and I'm like, oops. <laughs> and then I show everybody my card. Uh, that yeah, that's true. pretty much what I do. Show everyone your card. It's rather comical. I think the trick is to remember because sometimes you have to switch hands with the next player. You have to remember what color you have. If you have Uno, you have to switch with that player so you remember which card you shouldn't put down so that person doesn't win. I think that's the key point. Okay. Sounds, right, Sebastian? Sounds over my head. 
Yeah, because I don't quite get the hand switching thing yet either, but... Um, I, I'm still trying to get it, too. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we, we have some extra extra house rules this expedition, and um, yeah, we're working on it. Although general consensus does seem to be that they, uh, they're they not necessarily constant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is, they that may change. Is with this whole history. They're sometimes. relatively but constant. Sometimes uh, they seem to be the rules are enforced, and sometimes they don't seem to be enforced. <laughs> and the debate begins anew. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, that's, that's what's all started most of the great sibling and cousin fights throughout time is uh, the rules don't stay the same. So yeah, it's, uh, oh, it's without great. a doubt. Love it. Uh, speaking about debates, we have a survey for all to take in <laughs> the mess oh, on the whiteboard. Right. Yeah. It's so please really cast debate, your votes. Quickly. Not a debate. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy talk. Crazy talk on the whiteboard. What, what's crazy talk? Oh boy. Come oh, on. you didn't see the. Okay, so it wasn't you that added that last column. No, what, <laughs> what, what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> you'll this, see, you'll this see. This more mayonnaise nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let the internet try to figure it out. <laughs> we are taking uh, song requests uh, live in the 8 to 12, Blue Water edition. So uh, send them in from the van, from outside the van. Are you doing Blue Water karaoke? I did. Yeah, it's karaoke cool. time. And uh, so I had a, oh man, there was an amazing, someone wanted to hear me do an impression of a cuica drum, which I don't know if you know the Brazilian brass drum has amazing range pitch. It's a beautiful instrument. I cannot do an impression of it, but uh, I do have pretty decent, I mean, not, not decent sounding, but uh, technically decent range. Can make some, hit some high notes and some deep, some low notes. But uh, yeah, I'll work on that for you. Cuica drum. Yeah, song requests, send them in. Is that the, like, clamshell-looking drum thing? Ooh, yeah. clamshell-looking drum. Yeah. I don't know. The, I'm trying to... A few people at, at uh, the reed facility there play the drum thing. I don't know what it's called. What? So it's like oh, a you talk about clam, the clamshell-looking steel oh, the, drum. Like the depression. steel drum? It's a steel drum. It's a steel drum. Yeah, that's a uh, Caribbean, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, that's, it's called a steel drum. I think there's a guy in Florida who makes them. He hand makes them. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, they were they were telling me about all the details of the drum. Yeah, the, how he because yeah. I, I think I watched the, the documentary how he makes his and it takes. I think he said for one drum it takes him like a month and a half because it's every little detail and then he has to go back tune it, hmm. beat on it a little bit more, <laughs> tune it yeah. again. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, those have to be tuned exactly right, otherwise it would sound weird. You know what's really Steel funny about so cool. steel drums, actually? I remember a Mardi Gras parade I went to, there was an entire float of Michiganders, Michiganders. all playing steel drums. There was a whole float <laughs> of just steel drums. That's awesome. And it wow. was really fun. It was good. You know, I believe it. It's amazing. <laughs> From Michigan? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just there's, like a two, there's a pretty robust stories. set of music programs in the Michigan public school systems. A lot of good musicians. If you've never seen the Cuica drum, though, you should uh, check it out, listen to it, Google it, C-U-I-C-A. Is this the one that has, like, it makes, like, kind of whistling noises Can, and there's yeah. a string through it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking it's about. Awesome. Mm, yeah. Yep. Intriguing. Yeah, pretty fun. Some of my friends were all hanging out again and watching watching us uh, on on our <laughs> do our thing on this watch. They they were uh, they're they're trying to figure out some of the mysteries of the uh, putative caldera floor as well. Oh. So. Mm. There's all sorts of drawings in the Discord channel. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um. <laughs> We have a viewer writing in, currently watching Channel 3 that's showing all of us here in the control van, or almost all of us anyways. You can give them a wave if you want to. Uh, but it asks, it, it, somewhat somewhat demanding, I don't know if we're going to go through all this, but a uh, beautiful idea. Could each station stand up, wave, and tell us what information each screen is used for? Most of these are just used <laughs> for Googling, to be honest. That's too many screens, I don't know. Man. The, the ROV pilots and the navigator and video engineer have some serious work happening on their screens. We mostly Google stuff, <laughs> but we also are doing communications following the chat, the science chat, uh, 
checking out our uh, high pack, our, our uh, bathymetric uh, I guess it's both. dive plan, but uh, I don't know that we all want to stay. If anyone does want to stand up and wave, the camera's over there. You can give them a little wave. This is me. Zach uh, wants to do it. But if you want, <laughs> yeah, obviously, <laughs> if you want to do that, you can. But they also said, also play the Eagles. Take it easy. Oh, that's a good, that's a good request. Speaking oh. of googling, it might have been the Petoskey steel drum band that you saw. Oh, Petoskey oh, steel drum band. Oh, that's that sounds that rings a bell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Petoskey's cool. a northern Michigan town. Okay. Uh, the type locality for the famous Petoskey stones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Type of uh, fossilized coral. Those are really cool. They are really cool. I want to say Ordovician in age, maybe? Something like that. We're going to make it. Half hour. Does anybody else know what that means? Ordovician in age? It's, 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 a, it's a, <laughs> a time period. <laughs> Well, I knew that, but I don't know. I don't know when. Eight to twelve. I'll just call it eight to twelve. Good. Ah, Devonian, three hundred fifty million years ago. Oh, uh, wow. A bit older That's than the Ordovician. It's a long time ago. Uh, oh, crap! I forget the exact age range for the Ordovician. I don't work in the Ordovician that often, so I don't remember its time period exactly. Ordovician. Hmm. Well, I'm running down the road trying to loosen my load. Oh, oh it's a got seven women on my mind. Come on, sing it. <laughs> For they want to own me, too. They want to stone me. One says she's a friend of mine. Take it easy. Take it easy. Come on, everybody. Let down to your own wheels drive you crazy. Lighten up while you still can. Don't even try to understand. Just find a place to make your stand. Take it easy. That's all I got. <laughs> Nicely done. Good. Come on, now nah, we keep Jeez. going. <laughs> well, I'm standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. Such a fine sight to see. It's a girl, my lord, in a flatbed Ford, slowing down to take a look at me. Come on, baby, don't say maybe. I gotta know if your sweet love is gonna save me. We may lose and we may win, though we will never be here again. So up and up I'm climbing in. Let's take it easy. Guitar solo, somebody hit it. <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. I know Rennie has a guitar on board. Ooh, oh, by Rennie, the way. let's get him. Let's get him. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't made an emergence yet. Come on, Rennie. Oh. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, Malia's uh, ukulele, though, yeah. multiple times. Yes. Yeah. She is yes. wonderful with. That's true. Oh, there's, there's the birthday boy. Birthday boy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody say happy birthday to Jake. Happy birthday! No, it's not okay. 30 minutes, cause 30 minutes. 30 minutes. <laughs> we were just singing. You missed it out. We were singing the Eagles. <laughs> oh, karaoke hour. Oh, jelly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the Eagles. That's a good one. Good request. Thank you. Okay. Oh yeah. Mission older than Devonian. I need, I need to refresh the middle parts <laughs> of my geologic timeline. <laughs> I work on modern Extra rocks, and I work on Archean rocks. <laughs> uh, Everything in between is just like time. I work on zero rocks, so it's all time. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Mm -hmm. Oh, It's fun to be transported into different eras of this beautiful planet. Well, I, I know about where uh, Petoskey is located, and I know about the different, uh, approximately the different geologic uh, ages in the Michigan Basin, so <laughs> I was close. I was only off by about 100 million years. Oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> only 100 million years. I know oh. about the Anthropocene. That's about it. <laughs> hey, that's an important one to know about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
viewership just dropped off significantly. I don't know why. <laughs> Someone will blame me. Yeah, you guys need to sing louder. Hey, Come I'm on. the watch lead. Buck stops here. You gotta sing louder. I would imagine, though, that a large number of people leave once we leave the seafloor. I imagine. So I was Probably. actually joking. I don't. I wasn't paying attention if a bunch of people left. But uh, mm -hmm. if you did leave, you can't hear me. So good riddance. <laughs> okay. If you're, st if you're still here, if you're still here. We love you. I'm glad you're still here. Oh my. <laughs> oh, speak of the devil. Rennie has entered the control van. Hey, Where's the guitar? Yeah. <laughs> you know he's pro he probably listens to us down in the data lab. In fact, I know he does. Yeah. Where's the guitar, Rennie? Where's the guitar? <laughs> I think he go. just started up the crane, so, yeah. He's got the poles out there, right? Yeah, it's all good. We got fans out there. Remember when Take It Easy was first released. We're glad you're with us, taking it easy. Tuning in to Real 105.3, The Nautilus. <laughs> That's named from, that's, that's not me, oh that's the goodness. internet, they love it. No, I, I, I know. Just no, no, need, no need to sigh. <laughs> Someone just joined in two minutes ago wondering, what's happening here? <laughs> We're singing <laughs> <now."> <laughs> We Welcome love to you. Blue Water Karaoke. Okay, glad so um, do we need to do an introduction to 8 to 12 Watch oh, and uh, uh, just the dynamics of this if, space? If this is your first time tuning into 8 to 12, <laughs> what the heck is wrong with you? Come on, we've been here for three weeks bringing it live to you from the deep sea, hot, oh. fresh. Oh, man. Straight, <laughs> straight out the ancient volcano. You guys need to know what's going on. This hey, is where the party's possible at. Anything's possible after that hour and a half of uh, just unhinged food talk hey, a few we, nights we, ago. Can we start streaming ahead? <laughs> yep. Yep. I don't like our setup right now. So. You know, the last time I did any sort of question or poll on a whiteboard in the ship, um, it ended up devolving into use units of measurements involving botryoids. Botryoids. <laughs> How many botryoids? Yes. <laughs> on a rock. I like that. <laughs> um, you, can, you can thank one of the pilots on my watch from that expedition for coming up with uh, botryoids because she was so fascinated with the idea of uh, the botryoidal texture that we see so much. Yeah. And she's like... So do I call one of these, like, one botryoid? <laughs> brilliant, brilliant pilot. She's amazing. And just one of, the, one of the sharpest senses of humor I, I've met. She's wonderful. She's great. And I know I've used the word wonderful a lot tonight, but I mean it. It's a wonderful word. It's a wonderful word. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful life. We're so glad you all are all with us, putting up with us, learning with us, learning from some of us. I would say all of us. Maybe. We've all got different things to teach on this ship. I think that's fair. Yeah, so puffer fish don't get anywhere near deep enough for what we saw, so... We can rule those out as a potential culprit, as far as we know, as far as has been documented. <laughs> so, some other species did it. Maybe it was a, maybe it was something hiding. Maybe it was a bobbit worm. Mm. The sand strikers, you guys know about those guys? No, oh, not really. Yeah. Oh, those guys those are, are gnarly. Wild. Oh my yeah. gosh. And the bobbit reference isn't very nice, but uh, I don't like thinking about that. But. Yeah, um, we don't need to get into that. <laughs> but uh, so we'll call them sand strikers. But that's, uh, yeah, these hefty sized worms that hide under the sand and then come flying out and attacking their prey. Oh, they just eat themselves they out They've got like giant they mandibles. Just eat them out. Yeah, giant wow. mandibles. Wow. And they just hide under the sand. They're just waiting there and then things come over and they just pop out and whack. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so like the, uh, the giant worm in uh, Return of the Jedi. <laughs> I was thinking that. That thing still scares me. It's a little freaky, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 
Internet says it feels like uh, like I might know fantastic dad jokes, which I do, but it's in my contract not to say any of them. I'm not allowed. Um, I'm yeah, not that's allowed to drop that's, my that's something I do every now and again, though. <laughs> Val's been dropping some good ones. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, if the opportunity presents itself. Your honorary dad. You know, we 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 tried to get the tepid tub going for you. I can't believe that. There's two days it's in a row. Well, we'll just have Come to make on. it happen during the last dive. Oh, gotta wait two more days. I, I was I was telling Megan, uh, yeah, if you put water in the tepid tub, Dan will be in it. Oh, I'm in it. As soon as that <laughs> thing, as soon as that thing fills up, I'm gonna bomb in there and splash all of it out and fill it up again. <laughs> be fun. Most people tuning in, even those of us who've been following Nautilus for a long time, might not know that we have a tepid tub. It, looks a lot like a hot tub, only you fill it up with uh, salt water from the ocean, and it's party time. It's 8 to 12 all the time in the tepid tub. <laughs> Honestly, so, a tepid um, tub over a hot tub would be welcome in the temperatures uh, today yeah, at the sun. It's perfect. Yeah. It was, it was right pretty toasty, but like a humid kind of toasty. So you'd uh, walk out of, uh, you know, any place on the ship, and immediately your, your glasses, your computer screen, fog your phone, up. they all fog up. It's pretty humid out here. Yeah. I don't know where the water's coming from. Everywhere. <laughs> Nowhere. Who knows? <laughs> you all made uh, one of our viewers' sick weeks uh, a bit better and made, made them laugh. Uh, in a good way, and uh, we're glad if, if you were homesick this week or not feeling well and could tune into Nautilus Live. Uh, the deep sea has healing power, and the 8 to 12 watch likes to uh, likes to deliver that the best we can, the best we know how. Yeah, we hope you're feeling, better soon. Hope you're yeah. feeling better, better soon. Yeah. Better. Especially agree with this this viewer. Anyone who left doesn't know how to party. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> what else could you possibly want to do on a Friday night than hang out with the 8 to 12? <laughs> I'm going straight to the monkey deck after a watch. I'm all fired up. Just oh, yeah. party all night. Yeah, it's a we dance club up there. Great stars, waxing moon. Yeah. I just went outside uh, out of the van for a quick moment, and you can see the, the mahina. Oh. And it's a light shining on the water. Mahina Lani. Mahina Has been beautiful to tune in to uh, really almost a full, a full malama, a full malama of the moon. Yeah, we've mm -hmm. been uh, passing through. Uh, by the time we get home, I think we'll, we will have I think gone it's, through. Yeah, we're supposed to get in. It's going to be like an aqua. We're going to get in on the full moon phases. That's awesome. But I, I think today is especially exciting because it is Pico Akea, the um, autumn equinox, That's right, the fall yeah. equinox, but it's also a Ole Kulua moon, so it looks like, you know, equal portions of day and night, and then awesome. the moon, it looks like it's like a perfect half I of love it. what mm -hmm. a full moon is, or what a Muku moon is, a moon without light, um, so just really fun. Uh, just things that align in nature, rhythms, patterns, moons, stars, ocean swells, winds. It's all connected. It's so important tracking the tracking the sun and moon, um, their movement across the sky. It's important practice to uh, many indigenous cultures, certainly Hawaiians and especially mm -hmm. voyagers, navigators. Uh, understanding that rhythm that the celestial bodies tracking across the sky mm -hmm. from south to north from east to west over the course of a day over the course of a month over the course of a year and uh, all those carrying special meanings special understandings knowledge mm -hmm. in the in the heavens just like knowledge in the depths of the ocean yeah. so uh, it's been really really cool to get to experience all of that at the intersection right here on the surface on board Nautilus in our own minds and hearts and bodies. Yeah, yeah in contrast of Kai Uli, which is our ocean depths or sea depths, Au Uli can also mean the, the vault of the heavens. 
And that. so I think, you know, I was thinking about that while being up on the monkey deck and reading and just seeing the expansive sky above us and then just seeing the deep, dark blue, the kaiuli that we're sailing on, the ocean that we're on. Mm. It's hard to see, you know, where one starts and the other one ends. So it's, it's just amazing, especially on like the mornings when we kind of are sailing through squalls and the horizons blurred between clouds and rain and so just wonderful to be out on the ocean on any vessel on any canoe just being connected to the space hey, oh. <gasps> mahalo mahina yeah ole pilikia one uh, one viewer wants to know what does SPL stand for? Oh, mm -hmm. Science party line. Yeah. You put but, the party in SPL. <laughs> we put the party in <laughs> sure SPL. Do. But uh, oh, did you just? Okay. Yeah, did we just get inked? Oh, this is cool. Atlanta just got inked. Nice spot. <laughs> scared? Yeah, that squid want to join in on <laughs> <Yeah>. the party. <laughs> We'll take squids in the party for sure. Squid party line. Cool. But, uh, I won't lie to y'all. It took me a minute to realize that it really wasn't like a joke that this was like a party, but that it is actually typically science party is like the group of people that comes <laughs> on board of a vessel to do science. It is often <laughs> called science party. And also a multi-person line back in the days of yeah. landlines used to be mm -hmm. called a party line. Right. It's, yeah. it's an yeah. old reference. We yeah. used to, a phone line, you used to have to call everyone on that phone line. They could all listen in, but you'd, <laughs> you'd dial the particular ring that was a signal for that, for that house. But then you'd get, uh, you know, like Lois would be down the street listening in on your conversations, and, uh, <laughs> and you'd be like, Lois, we know you're there. Hang up. <laughs> you, know, and, uh, you know, we all got one of those neighbors, but uh, love you, Lois. But uh, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, just how it goes. So yeah, we have the science party on board. We have this uh, old party line. That's what they used to call those telephone lines. So this is, uh, this is science party line. I love it. Kukui, there was uh, an earlier hint at a story about uh, oh, your yeah. makua kane and a, oh. and a kohola, yeah? Yeah. Um, so my dad, he loves the Osi one, loves to paddle on a one-man canoe. And for those who may not be familiar with the one-man paddling canoe, um, it's basically a boat made out of epoxy or a really light material. Um, and you have your two yakos um, that attaches to an ama, and because the boat is so thin, you need that to like kind of stabilize yourself. And so he's out on this one man canoe paddling along kind of the coastline of South Shore of Maui by Kihei. And all of a sudden, like he usually likes to go like super close inland shore so that he can just paddle out and catch like the downwind back. And when so he was paddling like inland, like along like that that papa that that shallow reef. He sees this huge shadow and he was like, there's no way that a kohola stay all the way inside here. But he continues to paddle and he just keeps going. And you, you can see the peck fin like all the way on the other side, I think. Whoa. And he was like, okay, I better paddle fast, but calmly because if this thing decides Thumbs to up. breach, <laughs> yikes. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Oh, wow. But no, the kohola was just, just, just chilling. Cruising. Yeah. Just cruising. Just chilling on the papa. They do come in yeah. so shallow, they come down to the waters of Maui Nui to, uh, to have their calves or to make new ones, depending on where they're at in their own cycle and life journey. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's really a spectacular sight to see hundreds of humpback whales coming down. That is from really Alaska. trippy. Wow. Love it. But so kids. cool to have them just uh, swimming right underneath us. It's really special. Yeah. I remember Catalina shared, I don't know if it was on SBL, but shared a beautiful story about uh, amazing, memorable interaction with humpback whales in Colombia, I believe. And um, yeah. many of us have had stories. I, uh, really, really special creatures. That's awesome. Mahalo, Kukui. Mahalo. Mahalo, guys. All right, we're plugging right along here, coming up on uh, almost 300 meters depth, um, about a thousand feet. Uh, should be back up pretty soon. Again, we uh, we appreciate all of you for tuning in, staying with us during blue water, and hanging out with uh, the greatest watch. 
dia Can we do it point three? Yep. Is it possible to flag a whole dive as a highlight? <laughs> <laughs> no. But you can find the whole clip. But yeah, <laughs> it was cool. This was a good dive. Huh, that looks interesting. I wonder if our uh, oceanic white tip friends will uh, still be with us. They were hanging out with the ship again today and mm -hmm. while we were on station and they're often uh, coming to view around, around 100 meters depth or 50 meters depth. They maybe pop up and definitely as we get closer to the surface if they're around. Yeah, I was surprised that we saw that. I mean, I know squid or squid travel, but I still was kind of surprised. We saw that squid at like, what, 500 meters or something? Yeah. 400? Yeah. yeah. So not that that's unlikely, but. Yeah, we were seeing them kind of deep when we were in that, that, uh, that sort of dive with the, all the really tiny pink squid. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember what depth that was, but, you know. I think we were still seeing them somewhere around 1,000 or something like that. It was. Not what I'd expected, but oh, wow. I also didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. It's interesting, too. We only saw one of those squid. Usually you see more of the squid. Yeah. You don't just see one. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you may or may not have one attacking the cable. <laughs> <laughs> It is a little bit choppier topside. I uh, just got hit by a couple of those uh, waves that make the van shake in the last few minutes. Rogue waves. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, no. It was, it was a little weird feeling. Not quite. Let's see our deck team. They're assembling. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. There we go. Getting ready for Hurricane yeah. Atalanta. Yeah. Back on deck. Yeah, we still have pretty beautiful weather though. It's uh, it's been oh, yeah. it's been amazing, absolutely unbelievable this weather. Yeah, everybody who's been out to uh, Papa Hanomokuakea before has been commenting on just how remarkably calm the weather's been. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we we couldn't be more grateful for it. No, it's it's truly amazing. I mean, it's it's led us through some pretty amazing research and. Yeah. Get some pretty amazing videography. Like I think all of us were expecting to uh, come out here and end up spending at least part of the cruise getting chased around by storms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Luckily, we had a pretty large area we were trying to cover, so that helps. But mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely expected some weather days. I expected more swell. I, 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 you know, it's a nice shoulder season for 
to kind of avoid the low pressures, but uh, they're mm -hmm. still up in the North Pacific and can be in the South Pacific, so I thought we'd definitely have some stronger winds and some uh, some bigger waves, but uh, there yeah. were there's probably a week straight where it was almost flat. flat. Yeah. It was really wild. Not even a foot. Never seen anything like that out at sea before. I could run on the treadmill. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's an accomplishment at sea. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mm. I look like a hydrate or some sort. Yeah, I haven't had to uh, catch any uh, uh, plates trying to trying to get away from their uh, uh, from their places on the table. And I've I, this is my sixth time at sea, and uh, pretty much every time I've been out, I've had to go catching plates at some point. You so still have six more days to do it. I know. <laughs> yeah, I've been on a couple of cruises where I've. Uh, uh, been out and about during the day on the ship and uh, come back to my stateroom to find that uh, uh, the stewards have installed the roll cages, the roll bars on the oh uh, on the bonks, and you, you know you're, you're in for getting tossed around for the next day or two <laughs> once you see those. Huh, I've never seen, the, there are roll bars? Yeah, like, uh, are they like on some these? ships. On this boat? I don't know. Um, Downstairs yeah. has them, yeah. Um, they have them on the Falcor, well, yeah, uh, where they'll go on. Oh, uh, shark right behind ooh, us. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. a beauty, huh? Whoa. Oh. Sure enough. Oh, cool. Yeah, there's basically like a clip-on, like, extra bar that uh, they'll, they'll install on the uh, uh, the midline of the, uh, the bunk so you don't go rolling off the side. <laughs> so it'll, it'll, it'll catch you. Yeah, the that bunks nice. here are quite open. At least the one I'm in. I'm like, yes. there's not much keeping me from yeah. falling out. Yeah, that's <laughs> a nice mattress. Don't fall out of the top bunk. I, yeah. I think it. it's been like that on every ship that I've sailed. But uh, yeah, that's, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll put you in a roll cage for the night if uh, um, <laughs> things get a little rough. <laughs> I think those are squid that we're seeing. For viewers, we, camera. we did just have a beautiful uh, shark. Don't know its identity. It's pretty deep, actually but uh, came right up on the butt cam on Hercules, so we'll uh, keep an eye out. They're out there. How deep are do those white tips go? Oceanic white tips, I don't know. I'm not sure, but they'll, uh, they'll range pretty, they'll range pretty deep. I mean, a couple hundred meters, I think, is with it well within there. Um, their regular depth range. I am uh, using my computer to Google things again. <laughs> the thing that it's good for. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Almost 1,100 meters. Yeah. That's pretty deep. Yeah, they're you know they're largely open ocean like pelagic mm -hmm. fish sharks. So but that's uh, a. Wow. Yeah, that's an extreme. Uh, normally, appar apparently, what's more typical is uh, 200 meters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're within that range. We're at 150 right now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, Sokka was telling us a story in chat earlier about, um, uh, where was it? Uh, one of her colleagues uh, was in a uh, submersible uh, diving 600 meters deep, and she said they looked out the, uh, the submersible window only to see somebody's face. Uh. And it uh, turned out it was a seal. <gasps> Startled everybody. Awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, can you imagine the, the fright that would give you when you, like, look out and you're expecting to see ocean things and you see a face? <laughs> And apparently uh, that, that dive also revealed uh, that um, seals actually go that deep. Dang. <laughs> oh, look so at all these. A literal fish. surprise discovery there. Yeah, we saw some of the white tips uh, hanging out uh, off the side of the ship again today. We've, we've been uh, hanging out with them for quite a while now. They've, yeah. I think ever since the shipwreck dives, um, 
once we got back on seamounts, I think we've seen them pretty much every day we've been diving a seamount after that. I think so, yeah. I think I saw, an, oh, I don't know what it was, but I saw another large tuna or mahi-mahi or something. I didn't, yeah. I didn't quite, it, like,